Hi there. Hello. How's it going? I'm doing well. How about you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Nice to have you in class. Oh, thank you. All right. So, looks like the class is filling in um, at this time. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, I know I have had um, all of you in class before, but we're still going to do the little introduction here. Um, my name is Joe. I'm an English instructor at Colingo, and today's class is titled Science and Technology. What we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about uh, printing tiny batteries. There's a uh, new development uh, at uh, um, Harbor uh, Engineering School um, in which they can now print tiny batteries which will enable them to do many, many things that were not possible due to this limitation. And so we will talk about that. Um, additionally, we will look at a little bit of grammar. Uh, and uh, as part of this class, we're going to start changing the way we um, we give this uh, uh, classes of, in of interesting topics so that we can apply uh, the grammar here. And I'll give some examples on how that is used uh, when talking about uh, this topic. Um, so let me get you guys to introduce yourself at this time and I guess I could start with Sass if you could uh, introduce yourself please. Okay, hi everybody. I'm from Algeria. I'm a veterinarian. Um, I enjoy calling the classes a lot. That way, the reason why I am here. Okay, nice to have you in class. Um, and let me now move on with um, Heidi. <clears throat> Hello, uh, nice to see you again. I'm Heidi uh, mm -hmm. from Japan. Uh, today I can't use the calling or chat, so please uh, uh, chat in uh, blue, blue one. Okay, no problem. I'll try. It. It, remind me if I forget, right? I don't know if it works for everyone. I don't know if uh, Colingo chat works for everyone else. Apparently, it's working for me, um, but uh, I'll try to use both. Yeah, it works there. Yeah. All right, now I have a, a salad in class. Hi, Joe. Hi, everybody. I'm Salah uh, from Algeria also, 21 years old. I'm currently a student, studying safety engineering. OK. Great. So, um, welcome to the class, um, Salad, and uh, welcome everyone else as well. Um, and uh, uh, a few more people will, will be logging in. That's the link there. Uh, the problem is uh, it said that the teacher is not here and you got to wait because I log in the Facebook. That's me. Yeah, that's uh, for me also. I'm coming from Facebook. Yeah, it's okay. No. Oh, uh, I see. All right, so looks like the class is filling in. Um, I, I see. Start. So a couple more people logged in. I have uh, Powell uh, that just logged in. Maybe I could get you to introduce yourself. Hi there, Powell. Got you here. Um, my name is Joe. I'm an English instructor. Um, Dimitri. Title. I think Hi you there. might have. Hi, I think you might have two Colingo windows open. So you might want to check that. Um, um, wait, you guys get a message that says the teacher didn't arrive? Something like that? It's, yeah, it's in the, the chat, uh, above the chat. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Let's give me the link here and they can, uh, they can log in. Okay, I got you. So, Dimitri? Uh, yes. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Doing great. Very good. Um, could you uh, introduce yourself to the class, please? Um, okay, uh, I, my surname is Dimitri. Wait, my surname is Bagalubov. Uh, my name is Dimitri. I'm from uh, Novorossiysk, Ru Russian Federation. Mm. Uh, what uh, what else? Uh, uh, I'm I'm a teacher. Uh, I I teach uh, uh, a, I teach English. Okay, 
Very good. Welcome to today's class, uh, Dimitri. Nice to have you in class. Thank you. Uh, I have Aya in class as well. Hi there. Okay, looks like them. Uh, they might still be setting up the microphone there, and so we're we're gonna get um, started uh, with today's class. In a previous class, I talked a little bit about um, 3D printing, and I, I think Sal was in that class, and a couple of others might have been in that class. So today yeah. I'm gonna, yeah. So today I'm gonna I'm gonna talk a little bit about that as well, because that's kind of like the um, the, how these um, tiny b batteries are, are being printed um, are being printed uh, by scientists to get uh, to uh, manufacture amazing things. Um, and so, let me start by asking you guys, uh, what is 3D printing? And um, if I could get uh, someone's uh, thoughts on that, go ahead. That. If you put some, uh, for example, pencil in uh, mm, the cube, the another place, um, they make the same. The machine makes the same shape and the same color the thing using uh, plastic powder. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Basically, we scan that with a machine and we treat it with uh, software in the in the machine of the computer. And then, boom, the, the machine will produce it. And you can change, I mean, look, I mean, you, you choose the color of uh, any parts of that machine that you're going to paint. All right. OK. Yeah. It's like a picture, um, photograph, but it's 3D. Right, right. And then 3D, let's, let's talk about what is 3D. And, uh, can I go ahead? Uh, uh, 3D and uh, when you can uh, wash uh, the object in uh, uh, in several dimensions. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And uh, this uh, technology is uh, uh, is wide, widely spread in architecture and uh, other fields. Okay. Great, great, very good. So that's what we're going to be talking about, and we're going to be uh, reading a little bit. Uh, we're going to be reading an article about how um, um, they've been able to print um, batteries, uh, not plastic batteries, but actual real batteries, um, and tiny batteries that they cannot. Um, have printed in the past because of the technology limitations. Uh, so they can now print tiny, tiny batteries that w you were not able to do in the past um, because you didn't have the technology to do it. So scientists, um, if you follow this topic, have created many uh, devices that are very, very tiny. I don't know if you recall hearing about uh, 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 that they uh, created a, a bee robot. Did you, guys hear, did you guys hear about that? It's like a nanorobot, so what? Exactly, exactly, like a nanorobot. And so the limitation with that was that you couldn't you couldn't get it to work without um, a battery. You needed some sort of something that would power it. Uh, and sometimes that battery was bigger than the object itself so it defeated the whole purpose of you creating something like that and so now uh, with this new technology that they ha have they will be able to do um, uh, they'll be able to get this uh, machines to work this little machines to work um, better and they'll be able to create more of those and it's amazing all the things that they could do um, uh, with with those things so um, we're going to try in this class and in future classes as well. We're going to try to relate grammar topics uh, to the uh, class that we will be teaching. As far as uh, like for example, if I'm talking about uh, technology, I will be I'll be 
reference into a grammar topic and we'll be trying to kind of like learn both things at the same time. Vocabulary and a little bit of grammar. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to present some grammar and um, I'm not going to spend too much time on it so I have a, a PowerPoint presentation but I'm not going to spend too much time on it. We're just going to go through it, uh, mainly get you guys to um, uh, make sure that you, you know that you know the grammar and then uh, we will try to apply it into the article that we're going to read in a little bit. So let me do that right now. Let me open my uh, PowerPoint presentation. Just give me a second. Where's it? Okay. All right, uh, let me know if you guys can see my screen at this moment. Yeah. Yes. So we're gonna... All right, good. So I'm going to, as I mentioned, uh, I don't want to spend too much time on the grammar. Um, I, I'm just going to quickly present the topic. What we're going to learn about is future time clauses. So in other words, we're going to discuss all the uh, possibilities of, the, um, of this new technology that exists. So I'm going to go. I'm going to skip quite a few slides on this presentation um, and the examples. I'm going to go straight to the explanation of what this is. So when we think about um, future time clauses, uh, basically we will be uh, discussing uh, something that uh, will happen in the future, uh, but uh, there needs to be some sort of event that happens before it, right? So um, we'll be, we will be relating two events here. One most likely is going to be some sort of future, uh, some sort of present event and another one is going to be some sort of um, future event. Um, and so the, we, we see some examples here. The example is uh, we will buy a house before we have a baby. So the future time clause, to feel, what it's a, what's a time clause? Well time clause is just a group of words that make up a sentence and usually we will have certain words that identify them such as before, such as until, or such as after. Right. Is I have a question. Here? Yeah, go ahead. When you say time frame, is it the same? Yes, when we say a time frame it's uh, somewhat similar. Um, although when we say a time clause, what we're saying is that there's going to be um, okay, we're referring to a point in time. We're not necessarily specifying, right? But we're saying uh, things like before, until, after, and then there's going to be a, a sentence before we have a baby. For example, we will buy a house before we have a baby, right? So this event of before we have a baby, it's um, it's 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 going to be um, uh, the uh, the time clause that um, is going to let you know that okay, you need a house before you have a baby. So that's the time clause there. I don't. Know. Let me see if you give more examples about this. Um, so, for example, today um, I will explain grammar before I uh, talk about the article on printing tiny batteries. So I'm explaining grammar at this time, and then I will. I'll talk about uh, printing 3D batteries technology. Yeah. And then the usage of until, until he wins the lottery. He won't quit his job until he wins the lottery. So now, if you notice that when we use until, it's different than before. Right, so I have to win the lottery before I can quit the job. If I don't win the lottery, I will not quit my job. Okay, 
and then after so we're going to travel after we retire so first we must retire and then we will uh, we will travel and so if we think about the article that we're going to look at we will see things like this um, someone mentioned the technology new nano robots I'm, I'm not really sure if it's together um, will not be possible until new technology is developed. So here's an example of how we would use the future time clauses applied to this topic that we're discussing today. Um, another thing to learn about this is that the way that you make these sentences don't necessarily need to be in a certain order. You can have the main clause before the time clause. Right, so the main clause is we will buy a house. This can be before or this can be um, after as you can see here. Before we have a baby we will buy a house and the meaning literally is the same. Uh, the meaning doesn't change if you change the order of uh, these sentences. Okay. All right, I'd like to know if you have any questions here. For example, go ahead. I will prepare the dinner before my husband will come back. That's right. Yes. Okay, so if I like, you know, if I ask, I may ask some questions here. What what will you do after, or what are you going to do after you finish class, or after you finish? Because I know you might stay today. Might dedicate a couple of hours to English classes today. So what what are you going to do after you finish receiving your English classes? Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to watch uh, the the Mentalist after after what after participating in your class. Okay, and Dimitri, what about you? Uh, uh, okay. Uh, repeat the que your question. Yes, the question is, what are you going to do after <laughs> finish the English class? Uh, after, uh, after I finish my English class, uh, I'm going to to stroll along the key. Great. Sass, what about you? Um, after all, I'm going to watch the, the events, and, I mean the, the news events and television. All right. Good. And then I have a couple of other people that just logged in a couple of minutes ago. So, um, I don't know if your microphone is working, Sura. Can yes. you Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, okay, teacher. Uh, sorry, I just uh, joined uh, the class. Uh, I don't hear your question. Oh, yeah. The, the question is, what are you going to do after you finish the English classes? Uh, you mean uh, this class? Uh, well, I don't know if you're going to take a couple of more classes today, um, but you can think about yeah. the yeah. Uh, uh, so after you finish the rest, all the classes that you plan taking, that you've planned taking for today, what are you gonna do? Uh huh. After that, uh, I am going. I am uh, going uh, to uh, uh, to do my uh, homework uh, in the in the house. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Very good. So as you can see, the topic is quite easy, right? The topic is quite easy to to understand. Um, we use future time clauses to express either what we're going to do after a certain event, what we're going to do before a certain event, or up until a certain event, what's going to happen. Right. Um, so I don't know if you have any questions on the usage of before, until, and after. Any, any questions? 
uh, teacher quit yeah. uh, like uh, he won't uh, quit his job like resign when we the say second example yes the second yeah the second like example reza yeah La, uh, quit quite or quit quit the pronunciation is quit yeah like uh, resign from exactly his job. exactly, Just stop. exactly. Yeah. yeah it means to resign he won't resign from his job exactly that's what it means and another thing now that you mentioned this is the following if you see the time clause, the time clause will usually be in the present tense. Okay, the the uh, uh, the, the main clause. I'm sorry, the main clause will. Um, the, I'm sorry, the time clause will usually be in the present tense, and then the main clause is usually going to be in the future. All right. Um, so another thing to learn about this is that you will normally not have future time clauses in both. So for example, we cannot say, before we will have a baby, we will buy a house. Does yeah, that make sense? That, that's not, that, that, that will be incorrect. Go ahead, question. Uh, okay, sorry, but uh, before and uh, until or after, uh, sometimes both uh, of the sentences uh, in the present simple are correct or not? Yes. That's right. The the sentence is in the present time. The, it's in the, the the time clause. It's in the present tense. Teacher, both of them or are only the time. Yeah, they're referring to a time, uh, and uh, that time can either be um, you know it, when we say before we have a baby. Here we're talking about something that happens before a future time event. And so you don't necessarily need to put this in the past, for example. You would think that they, that might be in the past, but it's not. It's going to be in the present tense. Okay, very good. So I don't want to spend too much time on this because this was not the, the design purpose of today's class on the grammar. So just wanted to get this one out of the way, and then we're going to uh, we're gonna, um, talk about uh, today's, uh, today's article. So let me... Let me do that right now. Let me just um, let me open the article on the um, development on the um, that I was referring to. So give me a second here. Okay. All right, there we go. So now I'm sharing um, the today's topic. So this is recent news, by the way. This this happened uh, recently. Um, the article is kind of big, so I don't think that I'm going to read that we're going to read through all of it. Um, and um, and so I'm going to ask for you guys to help me read about uh, this article. Just we're, we're probably going to read all the way to here. Um, Could you the rest, make it as a bigger? Yes. Please. I'll try to make the letters bigger. Is that better? Or a little bit, oh, that will be better, I guess. Yeah, thank you. Okay, that's yeah, that's really good. <laughs> Maybe because I got a big I got a big monitor too so that I can see it really good, but I guess for you it's so, all right. So it's this okay is right this is the technology. I'm going to send you the link as well, right? So let me um, let me do that right now. Okay, there we go. So this is the example of the um, 3D printing. Uh, um, and how it printed a battery. Um, and so the benefits of this is that uh, you could uh, develop new technologies as far as medical implants, compact electronics, tiny ro robots, and a lot more things. <clears throat> so maybe I could get 
one of you to help me read the first part of this paragraph and please um, take note of any new vocabulary as we will discuss that as well. So maybe I could have Heidi to help me read the first paragraph. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Cambridge Mass, June 18, 2013. 3D printing can have be can now be used to print uh, lithium ion, lithium ion micro batteries, the size of a grain of sand. The printed uh, micro batteries uh, could supply electricity to tiny devices in fields uh, from medicine to communications, including many that have uh, lingered on lab uh, benches for lack of a battery small enough to fit the device, yet provide enough uh, stored energy to power them. Hmm? To the make them yeah, to ahead. make them micro batteries, a team based at the Harvard University and the University of Illinois at uh, Urbana, Urbana campaign printed uh, pre precisely interlaced stacks of a tiny battery electron e electrodes, each less than the width, uh, width width of the human hair. Mm -hmm. So if you can think of the size of these things, right, is less than the width of a human hair. Mm. So. I mean, you need, you can't even see it with your bare eyes uh, at times. And so this will enable tiny robots to function without having uh, a big battery on their back, for example. I'll show you, I guess I'll stop here for a moment. I'll show you uh, uh, the B robot that it was, it was like, it, it made the news a lot. Um, here it's, do you recall? Do you recall seeing this thing? Bees? Yeah, it's a bee, and it's but it's yeah. a robot. Robot, small insect. Mhm. Mm I mean, this is a bee, but it's it's in the form yeah. of a bee, but it's a robot. Yeah. Um, and so. Um, it has microscopic camera, small mm -hmm. tank, one and tons of battery. Okay, do you recall the purpose of that thing? What was the purpose of scientists developing that? For this, maybe a, a, a spy? Yes. What else? Um, Maybe, uh, maybe for scientific things. I mean, if 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 you cannot, I mean, go through a hole, then th then you can just send it, and you can dig whatever you want to see. Right. Yeah. So many the the usage are, I mean, the usage of these things are. Um, uh, I mean, there's so many things in way how people can use it. Obviously, there's there's the um, Spying, you know, go governments spy on each other. That happens a lot. Uh, so it's actually been in the news recently, right? Um, spying and and uh, information leaks. We'll talk about that in a future class. I think I'll talk about that in my next class when I talk maybe about. A, maybe it's all. like uh, a drone technology uh, spying, like. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could be used. Else. It mm -hmm. could be used for many things, like. For example, you know, scientists, what they do is they study nature sometimes, right? To learn from it. Mm -hmm. And okay. with this device, they can study animals without the animals having the perception that something is watching them. And so they will act naturally, I guess. Act so the tiny bee can go into places where it would normally would have never been able to get to. But <clears throat> the problem with these devices has been that the battery was usually bigger than what the device is. Okay, so that, I just wanted to show you that real fast. Let me go back here now. 
and maybe I could get um, someone else to help me read. Maybe Sask could, could help me read the next paragraph. Okay. Starting at not only did we demonstrate. Um, not only did we demonstrate for the first time that we can 3D print battery, we demonstrated it in the most rigorous way, said Jennifer A. Lewis, senior author of the study, who is also the Han Chork Waste Professor of Bio Biologically Inspired Engineering at the Harvard School of Engineering and Applied Sciences, and a core faculty member of the WIS Institute for Biologically Inspired Engineering at Harvard University. Louis led the project in her prior position at the University of Illinois at Urbana Champaign in collaboration with the co-author Chan Dillon, an assistant professor of materials science and engineering there. The results have been published online in the journal Advanced Materials. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. And uh, maybe I could get uh, Salah to help me read the next couple of lines there, the next couple of paragraphs. <clears throat> All right. In recent years, engineers have invented many miniaturized devices, including medical implants, flying insect-like robots, and tiny cameras and microphones that fit on a pair of glasses. But, one minute. but often the batteries that power them are as large or larger than the devices themselves, which defeats the purpose of building small. To get around his problem, manufacturers have traditionally dis depos deposited time deposited. film of deposited time films of solid material to build the electrodes. However, due to their ultra thin design, these solid state micro batteries do not pack sufficient energy to power tomorrow's miniaturized device. Yeah, very good. So this is the problem that is being solved by this technology. Mm -hmm. And so I'll read the last part and then we'll go into a discussion about this topic. The scientists realized they could pack more energy if they could create stacks of tightly interlaced ultra-thin electrodes that were built out of plane. For, for this, they turned to 3D printing. 3D printers follow instructions from three-dimensional computers, drawings, depositing successive layers of material, links to build a physical subject, physical object from the ground up, much like stacking a deck of cars one at a time. The technique is used in a range of fields from producing crowns in dental labs to rapid prototyping of aerospace automotive and consumer goods. Lewis Group has greatly expanded the capabilities of 3D printing. They've designed a broad range of functional links, links with use chemical and electrical properties. And they've used those links with their custom built 3D printers to create precise structures with the electronic, optical, mechanical, or biologically relevant properties they want. So this is the technology. What do you guys think about uh, this technology, guys? It's fascinating. Yes. Very good. And questions about uh, vocabulary here is something that you would like for me to explain. Yeah, there's a bunch of vocabulary words. It's new for me. Uh, there's one with. Lingerie. Then yeah. this one. Oh no. It is at the beginning. I mean, at the top. At the very top. Yeah, you copy it. All right. 
Linger. Okay, let me see how it's used. Is it on the first paragraph, second paragraph? Yeah, it's it's on the first paragraph. Cambridge Mass. It's beneath the the image. Yeah, I see it. I see it. Including many that have lingered on laugh benches for lack of battery small. Yeah. Um so you can the way that this word is used, and I remember that if you look up this word in the dictionary, you might find different meanings of it. The context will definitely will definitely determine what it means. And so, um, a, a reading strategy is for you to read through the context to identify what certain words mean. So in this case, including many that have lingered on lab benches for lack of battery small enough to fit in the device. Yeah, I um, wanted to understand the sentence itself. Mm-hmm. So I kind of this uh, in lin lin linger here. I think it's persists on lab. Is that correct? That have pers persist. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, oh. persists or something stay longer than usual. Yes, um, exactly. That's 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 what it means. But in the context here, it means that they have been around or they have been used. Um, and so uh, if when you look up the definition and you're gonna find that definition right in the dictionary you find uh, quite a few of those that um, stay in one place for a longer period of time. So you need to take that definition and apply it to the context here including many that have lingered on laugh benches. So in other words, that they have been used in your conventional lab to um, perform different functions, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I think in this article that there are some words Technical words we yeah. are not used to use them, so maybe uh, there interrelated. are interrelated, interlaced, mm -hmm. priceless interlaced stacks of tiny battery electrons. Yeah, I get it. It's it's on the second paragraph, right? So yes. To make the micro batteries a team base of Harbor and the University of Illinois printed precisely interlaced stacks of tiny batteries. So connected. If you interlace relays means that they were connected with one another. Okay. Um let me so let me I guess like show you this real quick. Um so as you can see, all of that is, is connected. There was a video here, if I'm not mistaken. Here it is, on how this works. It's only about 30 seconds long. It doesn't have any audio anyway, so I can just play it here on how they, they did this. And so that's the 3D printing working there. Uh, and remember that that thing that is being printed is the size of a human hair yeah. did I lose my article oh no <laughs> Yeah, there are many, many um, um, technical words that are related to uh, the science here. All right, so what we want to do next, well, are there any, any new words here that you would like for me to go over or discuss? All right, so then let me then bombard you with questions here about the um, article. Um, let 
before and then notice that I'm going to try to notice that I'm going to try to use the uh, a little bit of the grammatical topic that I mentioned at the beginning before 3D printing for batteries was possible what were the limitations uh, small robots and this is mentioned in the article by the way Anyone would like to share your, your thoughts? I'm not sure uh, exactly before the 3D printing uh, what uh, exactly the robot look like, looks like, like a limitation. But I mm -hmm. think it's not like uh, this technology. Uh, it's fascinating technology. and. Mm -hmm. We're using a lot of nanotechnology, so it could be a great comparison with okay. our last technology with robot. Yes. Yeah. Um, it mentions it if you read this paragraph here. Uh, you can get the. Um, it mentions a little bit on the limitations about it. So they read this couple, these two paragraphs. Me? Yeah, you can. I mean, you can read these two paragraphs to try to answer the question that I posted. So I'll give you some clues here. One is that the batteries were too large. Mm -hmm. That's right. the case. Yeah, they don't. I mean, they do some robots like insects and. So I think they mentioned that battery is so. Uh, Larger than a robot themselves. So. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and then that's kind of like the the problem that exists um, that existed, and, and and now I mean, remember that this is this article is, is brand new. I mean, this this was published when a uh, uh, couple of weeks ago, maybe. Yeah, June 18, 2013. How long is it to last? Oh no, I don't know. <laughs> I, it, I, um, I guess maybe if you look at this uh, link here, there's a link here. Um, then uh, it might mention that I haven't really dig into it. How long it will last? Not quite sure, quite honestly. Um, but uh, uh, you I get, you can find some more answers there. There's a full article there about about it. I'm pretty sure it mentions it. I didn't dig into the uh, into into that part. Just read this one. I found it very very interesting. Um, but if it lasts, you know, a couple of hours, and you know, it's great. And, and if they, those could be recharged, then they'll be great. Um, but I guess it depends. Uh, I mean, they could really make it last for a long time. 
um, just like your like your watch, you know, the battery for your watch. Um, but then again, uh, I, I don't know if it's, if they're going to be able to make it last that long. Pro I will say probably a few hours, but I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm inventing if I if I tell you <laughs> the number of hours. Yes, exactly. It depends the the mission. If, for example, it could be for a medical implant. It doesn't take a lot of time, so here it's not a problem um, because they need all oh, the accurate. Things uh, they need some cut for time, uh, but in some missions it could be very interesting to have a, um, a battery who um, is a little bit powerful. Mm -hmm. Yes. What are the okay? Let's talk a little bit about the uses of this. Um, what are the how, how do doctors or are you guys we familiar are, with how that is used? We watch TV about that nanotechnology. The mm -hmm. doctors are thinking about small robots. Uh, they can uh, inject in our blood vessels, so that small robot can uh, take picture inside of the blood vessel or somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So that's the question that I was going to ask. What are how do Doctors, or have you seen news about how doctors are using um, medical implants to treat illnesses or to do surgeries? Just like Heidi mentioned, right? Um, yeah, no, they can um, um, make picture the uh, our uh, stomach or somewhere. Yeah? Because they can use the still use code or some small camera, but the blood uh, blood vessel is very difficult. It's very sm small and narrow. Yes. Have you guys watched Doctor House? Yeah, I watched. I mean, the first. Uh, Episodes and then I thought um, it's used a lot of uh, technical words like medical support. Yes, I uh, learned. I've learned a lot of technical terms here by watching Doctor House. Have you guys watch this show? Besides Salad. Another show? Yeah, this is this is a TV series, right, Doctor House? Mm -hmm. It's the eighth. I mean, it lasts to the eighth one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyone? Anyone else watch the the Doctor House? Nobody. It's not popular. No. Ah, it's, it's, it is. He's too annoying person. Yeah, I mean, it, a lot of people watch this. And it's very popular, I guess, but I don't know if it's very popular around the world. So I guess in Algeria it is for sure. What about uh, other countries? Or maybe you know, because it might not be of your interest to watch this thing. Cause, you know, it's about medicine might be a boring topic for you. But it's actually really interesting. I like it. I like to watch Doctor House. Learn learn many things about medicine here. Just you know, so the superficial stuff, of course. I mean, not the deep uh, um, understanding of the diseases or anything like that. But you know, I kind of like understand what lupus and um, a little bit about other uh, neurological disorders by watching this stuff. Yeah, I mean, the others they can learn from it. I mean, they just I need to add a subtitle to the video, and they will be able. I mean, to see what they are saying. Mm -hmm. Again, no. Yes. That's true. Uh, I'm used to, to watch a lot of uh, kind of uh, series, and um, in, in this uh, like Doctor that you said you mentioned. Doctor uh, House. Doctor House. Yeah, it's very useful for us to to get some experiences and uh, to to look in uh, the environment in the hospital and the patient and to get and pick up the. Uh, Different vocabulary in this in this uh, topic. Yes. 
Yes. And so in Dr. Howes, you see a lot of um, um, different treatments that they do when they insert these little robots into people's um, into into people's bodies and and they do what uh, Heidi was mentioning to take images of the people's um, uh, bodies uh, body bodies body parts and and then it did, and then that helps them to solve some medical issues that they have. So I recommend for you guys to watch that. I mean, I personally like it a lot. I, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it's really it's really cool. Um, and there you can see some usage of this uh, technology that I'm I'm trying to display here with you guys today. Um, not not about the tiny batteries, of course, but the devices that the tiny batteries will power. That's that's what that is. All right. Um, any any. Questions about the article, guys? No questions? All right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to have you guys do a couple of exercises for me here. And that that's related to so the grammar that I presented initially. So just give me, a, give me a second. I didn't want to do this. Just a moment here. Okay, it's good I think time. I have too many windows open. <laughs> uh, have you ever watched The Mentalist? No, I never watched that. I, I, um, I think that that's too much science fiction for me. <laughs> <laughs> Is it any good? Well, I thought it is good. I mean, I don't know. It depends on the answer. I just, I know, I haven't, I haven't watched The Mentalist, um, but, uh, uh, but no, if, okay. I, 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 I just, no, I just never watched it. I found it good. I mean, you find it that it's good? Yeah, for me, it was good during it. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to get you guys to do is to practice a little bit with me here, and I'm going to ask uh, for. Um, I don't know if I had a couple of people that that join, and I don't know if your microphone is working. I don't know if Daniel's microphone is working. Hi, Daniel. Is your microphone working? Yes. Ah, okay. Very good. Mm. So, do you recall when I uh, initially started talking about the grammar here? Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to put these sentences uh, in the correct order. So remember that what okay. we're doing is practice in the future time clauses. So here we see the usage of after he graduates, and then here we see how the time clause will be used. What, what will be the application here? Mm, after he graduated, he went to long school. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Yes, after he graduates, he'll go to he'll okay. go to law school. It's, it's future. Mhm. Mm yes. Yeah, I said it so, past. Yeah. No. After he graduates, he'll go to law school. Now, the application at the end is either going to be in the uh, in you know, like you see here with will, or it could be with going to as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, Juan, is your microphone working? Yes. Yeah. yeah okay. Great. Yeah. Perfect. Let's see if you can do the next one for me. Okay. Number one, and remember what we're doing is we're practicing the future time clauses here. Yeah. I can see. I can see. You cannot. You cannot see? I can see the green, the green screen. You you cannot see my screen? Yes, I, I cannot see the, the works. The works. You pause? Oh. Alright. Oh, yeah. uh, let me try to do something here. Um let me send this to your 
Yeah. I go ahead and do it, Mister. Okay. Well, no problem. Let me. Let me. Then let me get uh, maybe. Um, maybe Sass to help me with the first one, and then maybe I could get Powell to help me with the second one, and maybe I could get Salad to do number three for me. So I'm gonna start with one. Yes. Okay. Mm, your they they own they own a house by the time they will be married. Mm, I'm sure. All right. They they will own a house by the time they will be married. They will be married. Okay, let's look at that one. That one and let's analyze it. Mm. Um, the, they are married. Mm. Yes. Uh, it, well, yes, it is. I guess um, because the, the the rule is the following: that you're not going to have two f um, future sentences whenever you use the time clauses. So after the time clause, um, you see the usage by the time they will own a house. That's the future. That's the main. Uh, that's the main clause, and then by the time is the time clause, and these sentences will normally be in the present tense. Mm, it's okay. Okay. What about the next one? I don't know if Powell's microphone is working. Yeah, my microphone is uh, fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is my example. She she won't start her own business until she gets more experience. Is this correct? Perfect. Yes, perfect. That's right. And maybe we could get the last one done. Salo? Uh, let me see. As soon as he will become a manager, he takes a vacation. Or is the opposite? Uh, as soon as. He as soon as he becomes a manager, he's going to he's take a big yeah. Mm -hmm. So the and the on the time clause, we will include the future there, as you can see. Yep. All right, very good. Any final questions about either about the article that I presented or about the grammar topic that I'm trying to kind of like relate here with uh, with today's class? I just sent you guys uh, the link so you can uh, access the presentation and complete all of the exercises that are related to that presentation. Um, so for homework, uh, you should uh, go over that presentation and uh, complete the exercises there. Um, I do have to end the class at this time because I'm going to start another class in about a minute or so. You're welcome to join that class as well. And so thanks a lot, guys, for joining today's class, and I'll see you guys in future classes. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. All right. <coughs> All right, take care.